It was dark when my plane dropped out of the sky. We collectively clenched, wondering if the water would be cold and if our seat cushions actually floated. Then, at what seemed the last possible moment, we slammed down to what I hoped was the runway. The pilot's voice filled the cabin. We made it! As the rest of the passengers applauded, the woman next to me squeezed my hand. I wondered, were we not supposed to? <laughs> and I made a silent vow to stop vacationing in places where the passengers are surprised that they actually survived their journey. <laughs> It was only when we passed by several goats pending alongside the runway that I realized this was just how one landed in Grenada, and I have to readjust my expectations about what would be normal in the week to follow. Grenada is an island in the southeastern Caribbean. It's about 90 miles off the coast of Venezuela. It's most famous for a U.S.-led invasion in 1983 that was so bungled, the U.S. had been relying on old tourist maps for intelligence. And this is true, they actually issued Hertz rent-a-car guides for its soldiers for navigating the island. I always like to imagine how that went down like, in a jump world. Like, uh, Sergeant, it says here the enemy camp is directly ahead. Oh, just past the charming bed and breakfast. <laughs> if we did at McDonald's, we've gone too far. The island had evolved in the 30 years since the invasion, but um, has remained relatively off the grid of tourists, which is why I like it so much. I arranged to sound 40 minutes outside of town, at a tiny beach surrounded by jungle. Now, my driver's name was Mr. Boney, which is a name fit for a child's cat, or a skeleton, or a direction. <laughs> we went past red shackle shops, slums, and aluminum pot pots, skinny, big, bald dogs slinked along street gutters, beside muscular men stumbling shirtless from makeshift side of the road rum saloons. The radio played one station, a man and a woman praying the rosary. And a married, fully graced, the dog with you, only married, mother of praying for us sinners. When I got there, I was so exhausted I passed out. The next four days were, okay, I guess they were tranquil and nice, but tranquility doesn't suit my personality. You know, I was convinced I had cholera from the insects, malaria from the water, and the crabs were up to something. I tried a massage, but I spent the whole time sweating, just waiting for the masseuse to lean down and whisper, you seem tense. Would you like me to work on this tumor I just found? It feels cancerous. So my last day there, I decided to take right, one last swing, and I go to this remote part of the cove. On my way back, I see this cow grazing off the side of the beach. Now, I for some reason felt a kinship with this cow. You know, both of us solitary beasts among all this beauty, and few would consider cows wild animals. I've always known them to be harmless, docile creatures. The Canadians of the animal world. <laughs> Before I could stop myself, this overwhelming urge to pet her took over, and I walked towards her, and I swear she smiled. And it was right before she lowered her head, bucked out her hind legs, and charged at me. I ran as if from a tiger. Ah! Cow! Now, ever being chased by a cow, screaming the word cow does little to sound the alarm. Perhaps it's the singular nature of the word, since yelling stampede would have likely gotten some attention, but on the imminent danger scale, cow is on the level of kick. So as I crash into the surf, I become aware I don't know if cows can swim. So I turn around and I see its two front hooves entering the water. It can swim! Cows can swim! I didn't think I had an enemy to drown a cow. It's too personal, like stabbing someone. I mean, don't get me wrong, give me a gun and I'll shoot it in the back from a distance, but just kind of holding a cow's head underwater just felt wrong. What was even worse is that I somehow managed to slice open the bottom of my foot during like my girlish dash. And as blood swirled around my leg, I realized I was in a unique situation of being trampled by a cow or eaten by a shark. When you're a kid, they give you these adages like stop, drop, and roll. There's no childhood adage for being trapped in the ocean by a cow. So I just walked parallel the shoreline. I looked on as the cow backed up and just followed me along the shore. So being held hostage by a cow is nothing compared to being how smart I was. So the sun is in the sky, I'm starting to burn in water, which is a painful irony. And I look toward the shore to see if someone had seen me, and both hoping someone had seen me and no one had seen me. And the cow, meanwhile, had retreated for a snack. So here's the thing, my ancestors were cowards. So this evolutionary option of fight or flight was settled long ago, and I took off running. When my feet hit the sand, I just kind of started running down the beach, and the honeymooning couple must have been surprised by the giant, naked, red man running at them. Is this some poor castaway that has been marooned here? What was this strange language he developed? Ah, cows, they can swim! So the next day, my erection of the driver took me back to the airport. We went over the same road we arrived on. We passed the same ranch shackle shacks, shops, and aluminum top huts. 
We passed the same skinny, bald, big, bald dogs slinking along the street gutters, and the same muscular men stumbling shirtless from makeshift side of the road rum saloons. And it wasn't until the plane was taxiing down the runway and slowly took off that I closed my eyes and squeezed the hand of the woman next to me, whispering, "We made it." We made it. <laughs>